Let's create this poster design together here in Photoshop. And if you'd like to follow along, you can download the images I'm using for free in the description below this video. So to begin from the Photoshop start screen, I'll create a new file and I want this document to be 2,500 by 3,200 pixels in a vertical orientation at 300 pixels per inch resolution. I'll click create. Now I wanna have a 100 pixel margin around the outer edge of this design. So using guides, we can make that pretty easily. Going up to view, guides, and then new guide layout, make sure that columns and rows is disabled. And for the margin, we want to enable that and set 100 for all of the values here. I'll click okay. Now let's create a selection of the inner edge of the margin by using the rectangular marquee tool with a feather set to zero pixels. I'll just click and drag from the top corner down to the bottom corner to select the inner contents. We'll now apply this selection onto a group with a layer mask so that we can use this same defined area for a bunch of layers later in the project. So going to the new group icon and then adding a layer mask while that selection is active, I'll call this to margin group. Now let's add a black color fill layer within this group, going to the adjustments icon and solid color. I'll set this color to black and click OK. Make sure that this is within the margins group so it has that white border around the outer edge. I'll now add some text into the design by accessing the type tool by pressing T, clicking on my canvas. I'll write Paris for this design and I want to use the font called New Nord Extended. If you don't see this font, you can find it within the More Fonts panel, which are the ones not installed on your computer. Confirming those changes, grabbing the Move tool by pressing V and scaling this up, I'll just go and place it somewhere up here in the canvas. And with this text in a general position, I want to stretch it out so it fills the upper half of the canvas here. So I'll hold the Shift key and Alt or Option at the same time and click and drag like so to stretch the text equally both up and down. And then I'll do the same thing on the horizontal anchor points here, holding shift and alt or option, depending on Mac or PC and stretching out this text like so. So this looks good enough here. I'll maybe stretch it down further, just holding shift this time to stretch out the text down this way. Confirming those changes, we're now ready to add our first image into this design. I'll do that by going to File and Place Embedded and then selecting my subject image. With this image placed, I want the post to line up with the eye inside of Paris. So I'm going to flip this image horizontally by pressing Command or Control T while that subject layer is selected and then clicking the flip horizontal icon in the contextual taskbar. Pressing done, we now need to remove the background. So I'll go and click on select subject and I want to select the subject and the lamppost as well as a bit of the sidewalk that will manually paint in on the layer mask. So accessing the quick selection tool by pressing W, we can now just add to our existing selection while that subject layer is selected, holding the shift key with the magic wand tool to add to the current selection that we created with the select subject button. If there are any areas that are not supposed to be selected, we can just hold Alt or Option and paint over the active selection to subtract from it. So Alt or Option to subtract, Shift to add to your selection. So take a moment to touch that up and I'll meet you when all this is complete. Once you're happy with your selection, we can click on that subject layer and then add a layer mask so that the background is removed. There are some weird bits on the post here, so let's touch that up using a hard brush. So activating the brush tool by pressing B, setting our hardness to about 90% here. And then with the foreground color set to white for now so that I can add visibility to this lamp post, I'll scale down the brush with the bracket keys click just on the inside of the lamppost and then hold the shift key and click down below. It'll connect those two brush strokes with a straight line. Now we can do the opposite of that, setting our foreground color to white. We'll now click on the outer edge of this lamppost, hold the shift key, click again, and it will remove everything from that mask in a straight line to make the edge look a bit more crisp. Now activating the move tool by pressing V, I'm just going to reposition this over so it fits along the outer edge of the eye here. We can go do some final touch-ups of the lamppost if needed, which I'm gonna do using the same brush tool method that I just mentioned. 
Finally, I would like our subject layer to be separate from this margin and have the lamppost extend beyond the margin. So I'll click and drag that subject layer above the group so it's not affected by that mask. But to do some quick refinements here, I want to add some visibility of the sidewalk. So I'll activate the selection of the inner contents of the margin by holding command or control and clicking on the margin group layer mask to select the visible area of that mask. Then clicking on the subject layer, grabbing the brush tool by pressing B, and then painting with a soft round white brush, we can just go and paint visibility onto that selected layer mask and we won't be able to paint outside of the lines because of that active selection. So it makes our life pretty easy to add this in. Now it doesn't need to be perfect because we will be adding some other images into this photo later to make everything blend in. Now I wanna also remove that outer edge of the photo here. So I'll invert my selection by clicking this option in the contextual taskbar. And then this time painting black with my foreground color on the same layer mask as before, I can now just go and remove that outer edge only painting within the selected area so that we maintain that hard edge around the margin. Pressing Command or Control D to deselect that, I now want to stretch the text from the P, A, and part of the R to stretch downwards in the photo. So clicking on the Paris text layer, I'll right click on it and go to Convert to Shape. Once it's converted to a shape, we can see this path and activating our direct path selection tool here, I can just click and drag over the anchor points that I want to select, which are these bottom points of the characters, and then just hold the shift key and drag down to stretch it out in a straight line. Now, if you're not happy with how some of this is stretched, we can of course just select a single anchor point for a character and make it wider like this. Click on another anchor point make it a little wider, whatever you are into. You can easily adjust this using the direct path selection tool. So I'll just make that bottom part a bit wider and then make this inner area a little bit skinnier. Now I want to reveal some of the original subject image through this text. So I'm going to duplicate the subject layer by clicking on it, pressing Command or Control J to duplicate it, and then I'll right click and go to Delete Layer Mask. With your duplicated image layer, I'll drag this above the Paris text inside of the margin group. And then we wanna make sure that everything is filling all the text beneath it. So since there's a bit of a missing area, I'm just going to use the generative fill feature by first defining a selection with the rectangular marquee tool like so, overlapping with the original image and then clicking generative fill, leaving the prompt empty and clicking generate. That way we can extend the photo a little bit. With the photo extended, you can choose a variation that you like, but this looks good enough for me. We now need to add two clipping masks for both the entire image and the generative fill layer. So I'll right click on the subject copy layer, create clipping mask, and then do the same thing for the generative fill layer so that they're only visible within the text behind our subject. Now we'll add some stylization effects. So I'm going to duplicate and merge all of the layers that we've created so far. So I'll click on the margin group and the subject layer by pressing command or control, clicking on both those layers. And we can duplicate all of them by pressing command or control J. And then we'll non-destructively merge them by right clicking and going to convert to smart object. That way all of this information is placed in one smart object layer and I'll disable the visibility of the underlying two layers. With our project merged into a smart object, I just want to stylize the image with some grain using camera raw. So going to filter and camera raw filter, Within the editing panel, we'll go to the effects and then increase the grain a fair amount just to add a more vintage feel to it. And you can play around with the size and roughness as you would like. Once you're happy with the grain, click OK to apply that as a filter below your smart object. And now let's stylize this a little bit more with a black and white adjustment. Going to the adjustments panel, choosing black and white, we can now play around with the different color tones here to add lightness or darkness to different color tones existing within the photo. But since I'd like to have this kind of washed out color along the subject, I'll just click on the underlying subject layer that is not a part of the smart object and I want to duplicate it to the top of the layer stack. So holding Alt or Option, I'll click and drag on that original subject layer, place it at the top of the layer stack, turn on that layer's visibility, and then change the layer blending mode of this layer down here to color. So this just gives a faded color look to only the subject and a bit of the sidewalk, which I think looks pretty cool. 
If the color is too intense, we can of course reduce the layer opacity to suit a style that works better for you. Now we just have a couple other adjustments to add. I want to add a texture in this black background here. So I'll click on the smart object layer here, double click on that thumbnail to access the contents of that smart object. And within the margin group, we want to add a image above the color fill layer. I'll go up to file and place embedded, access my texture layer, which is available below this video and click place. Now I'll just grab the move tool and rotate this into position, scale it up like this and place it somewhere in the photo. We'll now blend this into the background by changing the layer blending mode from normal down here to linear light to add this kind of grungy feel in the background. Play around with the positioning as you would like. Once you're happy with your changes, just press Command or Control S to save your changes of the smart object back to your original project here. And the final thing we can do is just add a little bit of extra text down here. Accessing the type tool by pressing T, I'll click in this area. You can type whatever you want. I think I will write the platypus was the greatest criminal mastermind. But since we want this formatted nicely in the bottom corner here, let's convert this type layer into paragraph text by right clicking on that type layer. And then clicking on that text, we can resize it so that it fits only within the confines of this box. Now pressing Command or Control A to select all of that text, we can just scale down our text so it fits within that area. I'll align it to the right so it goes along the margin edge. Press the check mark to confirm those changes and we can play around with the positioning as we would like just with the move tool here. Now I know that this text doesn't really make any sense, but I didn't know what else to write here. So that is what we're gonna do for this design. And with that, we have officially completed the process. Clearing our guides, we're going to view guides and clear guides. We now have a final design using a handful of simple techniques that you can hopefully use as inspiration in your next design project. If you enjoyed this video and followed along, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see another poster design tutorial that I created with a lot more effective going on, then make sure to check out this video here next where I walk through another entire poster design process. I hope to see you there next, so just click here to watch that video.